So what is interesting about this airplane? Probably its most unique feature is that it is the only Century Series jet that is a twin, so a twin engine aircraft. So two jets in the back instead of just a single one. And that really allowed this airplane to do things that the other Century Series could not, primarily fly much further range and carry more payload. Uh, so this airplane was originally intended, so it's, it's the kind of the prototype of this airplane, I say kind of because it evolved over time, is a uh, airplane that they only built two of called the XF-88, they meaning McDonnell Douglas. And it looks very similar to this and it was actually developed in the late 40s as a bomber interceptor. So the Air Force and the, the manufacturers at the time very much had World War II in their mind of, hey, we got these big bombers, they're not going away. We've got fighters that want to shoot them down. We need planes that can escort them and fend off the fighters. That very quickly became not a thing because of mostly surface-to-air missiles. But that was the original version or goal of this airplane, so it needed long range. And really the only way to get there in a Century Series is to make the airplane heavier and carry more fuel. They already had the biggest engines that were available at the time, so the only way to do that is to put two engines on it. Basically make the airplane not a whole lot bigger, but just put two engines so it can carry more fuel. Um, and so that was kind of the design point of this airplane. Because just to say, we've, we've got the Super Saber, the F-100 over here. Yep. So it's basically just a scaled up single, isn't it? Yeah, it, yeah. A lot of the sort of lines on it are quite similar between the North American aircraft and this one from the spec. Yeah, so yeah, exactly. We're just taking that up a notch when it comes to scale, range, all those things. Yes. Yeah. Uh, this is a B model, so it has two seats. The original A only had a single seat, and it looked even more kind of like a slightly larger F-100. The, again, the bomber mission very quickly went away. Um, and unfortunately, because this thing was mostly built for long range, it's got a very small wing, kind of like an F-104 in a way. The, the wing loading is similar, which makes it a terrible maneuverable airplane. It's, it's terrible for what we would call dogfighting. Originally, it had guns. The B model, they took away the guns. But with that small wing, it's not a very good fighter. But what they figured out is with the weapons carrying capability and the range, it actually made a great fighter bomber. So that was the F-101B with a second seat for a weapon systems officer and the ability to go 3,000 miles, which I think is somewhat like twice what all the other Century Series will fly. Mm -hmm. um, the other mission of this airplane that also worked in well with, with that capability was uh, reconnaissance or recce. So that was a different version, the RF-101, which had a different nose and have radar and so it had a bunch of cameras in the nose. But again, that high speed and long range, it was a really good airplane for that purpose. Again, very different was designed to do, but the ability to have two engines, more fuel, more range, gave it a lot of capability. So the team here very kindly let us get under the ropes. Yeah. So shall we jump under and start poking around the wing, the intakes and? Yeah, one, one other thing we can slide around, I'll talk about here real quick. The other claim the fame of this airplane, I don't know about it, this statement from a worldwide standpoint, but in the US Air Force, this was the first fighter that was intentionally designed from the beginning with radar. Um, other aircraft like the F-86 and the F-100, they were able to add radar to later, but it was sort of an afterthought. This airplane was designed from the very beginning with radar. The other kind of interesting point of this airplane, we talked about the F-102 last time and the original F-102 that couldn't even go supersonic initially. And they had built this airplane around this massively um, modern fire control system with a radar and the avionics to be able to track individual aircraft and assign missiles to them and so forth. Um, when that airplane couldn't fulfill its mission, all of a sudden now the Air Force had this capability of one it that was not, not able to be flown. So they actually, in the B model, I believe, they took that fire control system of that radar from the 102 and put it into this airplane. So the Air Force did have that capability. Um, so that was the whole point of the F-101B. They took away the guns, they put internal um, missile racks inside, and you basically had a very capable, again, not really a dogfighting airplane, but a, an airplane that had a very sophisticated for the time radar and fire control system and the missiles to back it up. So for a short period, it was pretty effective in that it had technology that really existed nowhere else. But again, a couple years later, everything else catches up. Yeah. So, interesting, interesting. Very interesting. Go. It is very interesting. Yeah. There we go. So, yeah. we're, we're making so All the dear commenters, <laughs> here we go. Let's get into this. Because this is a very, very lovely example they have here. And like we said, the team here at the Wings Over the Rockies Museum, which is a lot of fun. We're going to do a few videos here. Um, and I know you can't see me, and I'm just showing Joe. But we're going to... We're going to get into this. So shall we get around yeah, the other side? Let's go look at the tail. a little bit more there. So let's duck under the 
the Bolo and... Be sure to check out the full-length Century Series video filmed at the Pima Air and Space Museum and the two follow-up videos on the F-101 Voodoo and F-110 Spectre, better known as the F-4 Phantom II.